Hello, this is Jacqueline from Jack Knits, and today we're going to learn how to do the provisional cast on. Now, the provisional cast on is a way where you can cast on your cast on edge, but maintain a row of live stitches. And that way, later on in your project, you can go back to this cast on edge, retrieve those live stitches, and do whatever the project calls for with those live stitches. They're kind of hanging on here. Uh, with some scrap yarn and that's kind of holding them in place until you're ready to use them later. So stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to show you a couple really unique ways to use a provisional cast on which can produce some really fun things in your knitting. Now today I'm going to show you two different ways to do a cast on. One is the more familiar way and probably more traditional way and that is with a crochet hook and some scrap yarn. And this may um, be okay for some, but if you do not have a crochet hook or you're unfamiliar with using one, um, that might be a little bit intimidating. So I'm going to show you a second way to do it without the need of a crochet hook. And it's very similar to the long tail cast on method. So after you see both methods, you can choose for yourself which one might be easier for you. And they both will have the same output. They both produce the live stitches at the bottom. So it's just a matter of preference on which one you will use. <music> Okay, so method number one is with the crochet hook. And so you will need for this, obviously, a crochet hook. It really doesn't matter what size, but you don't want it too large or too small uh, for whatever size needle that you're using. So about the same size, um, but that's not super important. And you'll need some scrap yarn. And I like to use a cotton yarn or linen or something that's fairly smooth because later on you're going to need to unravel your uh, cast on stitches. And if it's kind of fuzzy or has a lot of um, fur or, or fuzz to it, it may be difficult to unravel. So this will be nice if it's nice and smooth to unravel. Then you will need your knitting needles that you're going to be using for your project, a scissors, and then of course the yarn that you'll be using for your project. So we'll just uh, use the blue for our project and this yellow for our scrap yarn. Okay, so to begin with, take your scrap yarn and your crochet hook, and we're just going to make a slip knot at towards the end of my yarn here. You don't need a, a long tail. And we're going to start by just crocheting a few simple chain stitches with your crochet hook just to give it a little tail to begin with. Okay, once you've done that, you can pick up one of your knitting needles, put your crochet hook in your right hand, your knitting needle in your left hand, and hold that scrap yarn as well in your left. And you'll see that the uh, yarn and the crochet hook kind of perform a V. So I'm going to put my knitting needle in between that V. And I'm going to start by now just doing a crochet slip or a chain stitch right over top of that knitting needle. And bring it through. And that's my first cast on stitch for the provisional cast on. So now I will do it again. But in order to, um, to do that, oops, I need to bring my yarn to the back again in the starting position and I will do another chain stitch over my knitting needle, bring that yarn again to the back, do it again and you will continue in this way until all the stitches are cast on for the number that you need for your project. Now to finish, just knit, or uh, excuse me, crochet, just a couple more uh, chain stitches. Just to give it a nice little tail at the end here. And then you can cut off, which you don't need. You don't need that anymore. You can bring, bring your yarn through. And then I like to give myself a little bit of a reminder on which side of this of this cast on, I'm going to need to start with when I'm ready to unravel this to produce my live stitches. So I like to just give it a little bit of a um, little loop here knot just to give myself a little reminder that this is the side I need to unravel when I produce my stitches. Okay, so now we can start to knit with our regular yarn that we're using for our project. So let's take our blue yarn here and we can 
start to knit our first row. So let's knit, just start knitting our first stitch. Knit all the way across our cast on stitches. And I will go ahead and just knit a few rows and stocking that stitch so I can then show you how to pick up those stitches when our pattern calls for it. Okay, I've knitted a few rows of stocking knit stitch and now it's good to be the time. Let's say that uh, we want to unravel this cast on edge to reveal our live stitches and place them on a new needle so we can continue to knit from there or do whatever the pattern calls for for those live stitches. Now if you recall, we added a little reminder to ourselves, this little loop, that this is the, the direction that we want to put the needles, uh, the stitches on our needle and unravel it from this right to the left. So let's undo this and do this last chain stitch here. Now we can do this a couple different ways. We can slowly unravel this chain stitch till these live stitches reveal itself and then we can stick them on the needle. The danger with doing that is sometimes when these live stitches uh, are, are shown, they can slip away from you pretty easily and it's hard to uh, pick those up. So what I like to do is a little bit of a safer method is I like to put them on my needle before I unravel the chain stitch. Um, the trick with this is just kind of knowing which loop to pick up. So if you take a peek here, our very first stitch is going to be this first little loop here. And then if I follow this um, stitch down, I can see that this next V, and I'm gonna always grab the same side of the V. It doesn't matter which side, but I'm gonna um, grab the second half of the V for all my stitches. So my next stitch that I'm going to, or loop that I'm gonna grab for my stitch is right here. And my next stitch, see the V here, I'm gonna grab the second one. This is the very last row of stitches that are hanging on with those yellow thread. Here's my next stitch, that second V. My next stitch here, and so forth, all the way to the end. Each of these stitches need to be picked up. And then the very last stitch is sometimes kind of hard to see. It's always a little hanging way up here. See this little yellow loop? This last stitch is way up there, that blue stitch, and that should reveal 10 stitches. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So those are all the stitches that we need to pick up. So now that they are safely on our needle, we can start to just pull on this chain and unzip that crochet chain off of the needle. Just like that. from this side as well. There we go. And just slip it out. And now we have our row of stitches on our, knee, on our needle from the cast on and our original ones from our last row of knitting. And we can proceed with the pattern from there. So that is the way with a crochet hook. So now let's look at method two without using a crochet hook. So method number two of the provisional cast on does not require a crochet hook. It just requires your needles, still some scrap yarn and your working yarn, a scissors and a darning needle is helpful. So with this, it is very similar to the long tail cast on method. So if you're familiar with a long tail cast on method, this is going to look very familiar to you. So play, take your both your scrap yarn and your working yarn uh, together and hold them together, the ends of the pieces here. Hold them in your hand along with your uh, one of your needles. Then we're going to take our thumb and forefinger and put them between your two threads here with the scrap yarn uh, nearest you. And does this look familiar? This looks just like the long tail, right? Where that we start? It's exactly what it is. Now we're going to do exactly the long tail cast on method with these two yarns, the scrap yarn and your regular working yarn. So if you're familiar with the cast on, you know that you just go in and out like that, in through the thumb, over here, down in there. And that is how you will just continue to cast on. Easy, right? So this is the uh, same method you use for the long tail cast on as the provisional. So this yellow is going to hang onto those stitches just like uh, 
the chain stitch did with the crochet hook. It's just going to be a little bit different on how to retrieve them. So now that we've casted on 10 stitches with this method, if the stitches just hang on there nicely, we can start to knit with our working yarn, just like you would with any other type of cast on. So you can start to knit a row, and as I did before, I will knit a few rows in stocking that stitch and then show you how to pick up these alive stitches from that scrap yarn. Okay, now that I've knitted a few rows of stocking net stitch, we can proceed with picking up these live stitches and putting them on our needle. So I also forgot to mention um, earlier that after you cast on, you can just simply snip off your uh, scrap yarn. You don't need that anymore. You can just let that hang and uh, be ready to unravel it uh, when it times come. So let's take a look at what we have here and take a look at the stitches that we're gonna pick up. So the yellow thread is our um, scrap yarn here and we're going to start to unwind that and reveal these live stitches. So I cast it on 10 stitches so I'm going to want to pick up 10 stitches. So let's see what's where those are so you can kind of see what's where we're going to pick them up. So these little blue bumps are our stitches we're going to pick up. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then that last one is always kind of hanging out there way on the edge. This little last one bump we're going to want to make sure we pick that one up as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, and there's no fancy little unzip like the um, chain stitch, we're going to have to just kind of manually um, undo these. I like to take a darning needle and just kind of manually pull that yellow scrap yarn out of these stitches and start to reveal where those stitches are. So this is the first stitch we're going to pick up and I'm going to unravel one more little here so I can get to this stitch. So once you see exactly the stitch that you need to pick up, you can take your knitting needle and put it on there. I like to do it from the back to the front and that will put it in the right position. And you can continue to unravel it some more. And then if that tail gets too long to pull out, sometimes you can just snip that off so you've got a little bit shorter tail to, to work with. So let's continue to just unravel these stitches, pull those out. Now that I can see exactly where I'm picking that up, oops, lost my first stitch there, there we go. Put it on the needle and then continue to unravel, picking up each one of those blue bumps that we see along the way. Here's another one. Let's put it on the needle. And there we go. Let's continue to do this to uh, the end of the row, and I'm going to show you how to get that last little difficult stitch as well. Here's that last stitch. We want to make sure we pick up that last one that's hanging on there by the our scrap yarn. So let's pick it up from the back to the front as well. Pull our last little bit of our scrap yarn loose. And now we have 10 picked up stitches uh, from our cast on. So now we can continue to knit in the opposite direction or whatever you want to do. So that is the second method without the use of a crochet hook. You'll notice that it was a little manually tedious to kind of pull those stitches out, but the flip side, the benefit, is that easy cast on that you can just do um, that's come so naturally to us with the long tail. So let's take a look now at what fun things you can do with the provisional cast on to make um, some really fun things in knitting and to make your seaming maybe a little bit easier. So what are some ways that you can use the provisional cast on in your knitting? One way that I have used it a lot is for a folded over brim, for a brim of a hat or cuffs for mittens. And uh, you would fold it over like this and have this nice folded over brim. So what you would do to do that is you would start with a provisional cast on, then knit your desired length of your brim, actually twice as long as the length of your brim, 
put those uh, stitches from your provisional cast on onto a needle like I just showed you and then you would simply fold it over with the wrong sides together and then you would knit each of these stitches together, seam these two together so you would have one row of stitches instead of the two. So what you would do is you would knit this stitch and this stitch together and this stitch and this stitch together in this fashion. So you would put the needle through together on the first needle stitch and also the first stitch on the back needle and then knit those two together. So you would knit them, take your needle through the back one and the front one and then slide them off the needle just like that and you would do that through the whole length of your knitting till you had just one row of stitches and then you could continue stitching in your normal fashion for the rest of your hat and it produces a really nice folded over warm brim for a hat or like I said for cuffs of mittens. Now another thing that you can do with this is you could seam together and bind off your knitting all in one step. So what I mean by that is if you started again with a provisional cast on, put those stitches on a needle, and then let's say that we were uh, knitting a uh, headband, like this is a headband that I knitted, and I actually just manually seamed these edges together. Once I had the length of my headband done, I could bound off and then with a needle seam them together, which you know calls for a little bit of a seam. But if you do it with a provisional cast on, you can seam and bind off in one step with an invisible seam. So what you would do in that method is once you've got your cast on stitches on a needle, fold it together with your right sides together. And now we will do the same thing, but we would bind off instead. So we would knit these two together, first stitch, back stitch, knit those two together, take them off through those needles, off the needle for both of them, knit a second stitch in that same fashion, and this is by the way called the three needle bind off. So if you uh, want to google that you can find uh, demonstrations on how to do that as well. Now you have two stitches on, so I've done two stitches and now I'm going to slip this one over this first one just like you would do for a bind off. So kind of take one of your needles, perhaps your back needle, pass it over that first one so I could bind off a stitch and then I would continue in that fashion till I have bounded off all these stitches and that is going to seam them together while I'm binding off and it produces a really nice seamless uh, stitch. So that is another way to use a provisional cast on in your knitting. Seamless stitches or a folded over brim or maybe you just want to start knitting the other direction with that cast on. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications of new videos all about knitting tips and stitches and creative patterns. Thanks for watching friends. Happy knitting!